Music, tastes and smells can transport you back to fond memories. YouTube can't convey tastes and smells. Not yet, at least. So it's easiest to stick to music. I think it works both ways. A great song can make a good memory better. But I also think good memories rub off on the music you're listening to at the time. I'm getting a worrying sense of deja vu when saying this, but I don't think it's any coincidence that the theme tunes of popular TV series all have millions of views and thousands of comments on YouTube saying how great they are, even when they're not that good. It's the power of association. And I don't think it's any coincidence that the songs I enjoy the most are from some of the happiest moments in my life. Or saddest. Let's just say the most impactful moments and be done with it. Who's to say if a song's good or bad? I think the music in Minecraft is terrible, but it brings back fond memories, so I still like it. From a YouTuber's perspective, music is a secret weapon. Play the same music enough and it becomes associated with your channel. Your viewers begin to enjoy it, even if they wouldn't have thought twice about it the first time they heard it. Vsauce comes to mind. I wouldn't even call what he uses music. It's a load of background plinks and plonks. But it works. It's his music. I can't think of anything that's more suited to his channel. And when I was looking for music for mine all those years ago, they all seemed subpar in comparison to what he had found. But I stuck at it. I kept shoehorning my dad's music into my videos, as well as some of my own, and now I'm pleased that I have. You guys seem to have grown to like it, and I certainly have. Hell, the ones I like from my childhood don't even get a mention because these B-sides have grown so familiar and comforting. I often get people asking me if they can use these songs in their own videos. Of course they can. But they probably shouldn't. Just like I shouldn't use Vsauce's music in mine. I'm happy with how I've featured music in my videos. But if what I've said so far is true, then there are far-reaching implications. Like, is music good or bad? Or is it just down to association and repetition? And if that's true, then for people making their own music, being good won't be enough to make it a success. So how the hell are they supposed to get their songs out there? You know what I'm going to say, don't you? You should work with a YouTuber, and in return, you'll get… exposure. It's a dirty word. Many people use it as a way of getting stuff for free. And it's probably because exposure has a bad reputation that I wanted to make this video. Because in the case of music, I think that exposure is good enough, and that YouTube channel is the perfect place to get it. Because being on YouTube videos is better than exposure. It's repeated exposure. It's good to get your music heard by thousands of people, but better still is to have it heard by the same thousands of people dozens of times. Being in the background of a YouTube video is a perfect place for this. It's not so obvious that people form a strong preference about it straight away. Instead, it gives people time to subconsciously warm to it, until one day they realise they really like the music. So, I think that exposure is adequate reward for using your music. But it gets even worse, because sometimes I won't even bother shouting you out in a video. I might forget to feature a link to your site in the description. And I won't even think it matters. It's not like I'll deliberately avoid linking to your storefront out of spite. It's just I don't always think it's necessary. When your music is a regular feature on a YouTube channel, there's no rush to visibly promote it. Unless it plays a particularly crucial part of the video. Like, say, my Fob Too Far video from a while back, which acted almost like a music video. In that case, I'm more than happy to link to the artist's storefront wherever I can, especially since it's a track I seldom use elsewhere. But in most cases, music on my YouTube videos is used as background ambience. An artist shouldn't expect people to flock to their storefront whenever it's used. I don't even think that would happen. I think the best relationship that music can have with a YouTube channel is a relationship that's as long, slow, and as quiet as it can be. People might not even be aware of it playing in the background of videos for weeks or even months. It will creep up on them. Then one day they'll suddenly realise that they really like the music. And might not even know why. The tracks become so intertwined with the YouTube channel that they become inseparable. Almost like part of that channel's lore where enough of the audience knows about it for it to become common knowledge. I think that's when music pays off for everybody involved. The YouTuber finally gets music that suits their channel. The audience has finally grown fond enough of the music that they begin to expect it on new content. And the artist has slowly amassed an audience that really likes their style. That, to me, is the best kind of promotion. It's not forced or rushed or in your face. As the viewer, even if you become aware that the music's there to promote itself, you don't even care because you've grown to like it. Enough, maybe, to visit their storefront in search of more. I dislike most promotions out of principle, but the symbiotic relationship between a YouTuber and their music, it's beautiful. I don't even think this video describes my experience with the musicians I work with. 
It's just how I see the balance of power between the YouTuber and musician, and how, at first glance, a one-sided deal might actually pay off for everybody involved. I use music made by friends and family, because I like the idea of getting their songs heard. Plus, their music is about as safe from YouTube strikes as I can get. But I don't think the importance of music on YouTube channels should be overlooked. Now, you know I pay my artists in exposure, and you're being subtly manipulated to enjoy music you might otherwise not. But what if that's a good thing? Third.